Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf. Baba Basra Mem Aleph, we are holding right on top at the Mishnah. It says the Mishnah, Kol Chazaka, She'eni Matana, Eina Chazaka. Look, this fellow is in the property for three, four years. He has a Chazaka, but he has no claim to base his Chazaka upon. That doesn't work. Eina Chazaka. Ketza. For example, Amar Loi, Reuven, the assumed owner approaches Shimon, the occupier, with a question. Could you please explain why you're in my field? Shimon responds innocently. Well, you know what? Actually, because nobody uh, ever told me to leave. That doesn't work. And the Gemara, of course, will ask. I mean, obviously, right? So this is a Chazaka with any proper claim. However, if he responds to Ruvein by saying, Shemachar Tali, what do you mean? You sold it to me, Shemachar Matan, you gave it to me as a gift. Or, Avicha Machar Ali, Avicha Nisan Ali Matan, or your father did so, sold it to me, gifted it to me. These are proper claims. And despite the fact that he doesn't really have proper documentation to back up the claim, well, it's already three years running. Why would he hold on to his documents so long if he's there? Uncontested, unchallenged. Hariza Chazaka, this constitutes a Chazaka. Concludes the Mishnah. Now let's say he's a Yoyrish. Meaning, Shimon says to, to, you know, to Ruvain, Look, I got this property from my father, Levi. Uh, you know, my father had it and he, uh, he passed away and I, uh, I took it over. So in this case, he doesn't need, he doesn't have to. Go ahead and explain in detail how his father obtained this property, whether he bought it. What, he has no. He, has, he doesn't have to uh, be familiar with his father's business dealings, right? But the Rashbam does add at one point, based on the Gemara later, he still has to prove through Adam that his father occupied that property for at least one day. They saw him living there for at least a day. That substantiates the father's hold on that property his ownership, which allows that to be transferred to the son. Oh, so the mission started off. A chazaka without a claim is worthless. Pshita says the Gemara, obviously, I mean, if he has no taima, he has no chazaka. Why would he just get the property for no reason? Mal the Tema answers the Gemara like this. Perhaps I would think we shall interpret his words as follows. Hi, Gavra Mizban Zavnale. Let's speculate. That in fact, Reuven had sold this property to Shimon. Hayara, this property, right? Ushtara Havale, and truthfully, Shimon had a document. He had a purchased document, Birkas, and he lost it. So now, when he's being confronted by Reuven, the reason why he's responding in this sort of non committal fashion, Savar, he figures, I don't want to make it worse for myself. If I shall claim the, the truth that he sold me this property, they're going to ask me for documentation. He bought it, show your deed, right? I'm really, they'll tell me, show your document, and I know I don't have, I lost it. So he prefers a more benign route, thinking that will save, uh, save him the trouble. So that's why he responds in this fashion. Therefore, says the Gemara, perhaps, based on this train of thought, based on this thinking, we, you know, the Bezden, the Dayanam, should stand up for Shimon and advocate for him. We shall now help him out. Well, you know, Mr. Shimon, we'd like to speak to you for a minute. Maybe, in fact, you have a star? Could that be? Did you lose it? Oh, this would be an example of the, Mish- the Pasuk and Mishle. Right? Open the, uh, uh, you know, uh, facilitate the, the, the mute person's uh, conversation, meaning get him, get him to speak, get him to talk. Um, infuse him with some confidence. Who? So this would be an example of such a halacha, of such a concept. So we should actually step in and help him out. Kamash the answer is no. Unless he presents this type of claim, we're not going to go step in and interfere. So if he has no time, if he has no response, if he has no valid response, he lost the field. We have a story involving Rav Onan. He was a neighbor of this fellow, and suddenly a flood came along. Shokal Bidkabari, this flood 
swept through his property and the uh, boundary markers got moved around. Okay? So Rav Anan got his uh, construction workers and they um, reset the fence. It turns out that mistakenly it was on the neighbor's side. It wasn't exactly on the property line. It got moved around. Also, I'll come to Rav Nachman. So the, uh, the neighbor, they come to Rav Nachman to try to get Rav Anon to move his uh, fence back onto the correct, uh, you know, uh, property point. Amr Leh, so Rav Nachman in fact told him, Zil Hadar, go uh, put it back where it belongs. Rav Anon responded, what do you mean? Vach li, Rashi explained, Rashi explains, look, he, um, my neighbor helped me build a fence, he was right there. Um, you know, he was okay with it, you know, it's been a couple of days, and nobody complained, you know, so it's a proper chazaka. Amr Lehsi said, what do you mean? A day or two gives you a chazaka? You need three years. Come on, Rabbi Yudah Rabbi Shmuel, are you following the shit of Rabbi Yudah Rabbi The Amr who maintained that kol of if the chazaka takes place directly in front of the owner, right? Sometimes the chazaka is here and the owner is there. But here the chazaka is right right in front of the owner. The altar of a chazaka, that makes an automatic instant chazaka. The fact that he fails to complain right away indicates concession. Is that what you mean to say? Now the Rashbam brings Rabbi Yehuda is back in the Mishnah Lamed Ches where Rabbi Yehuda um, describes the mecha process as uh, where the owner actually was elsewhere and he came, uh, came running. It sounds from Rabbi Yehuda that if in fact the owner would be right here, we don't need three years. It's an instant effect. And Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yaisi is uh, later on in Tess, where likewise he learns that if a chazaka happens of in front of the owner, it's an automatic chazaka. Is that what you mean to say, Rabbanu? Well, actually, less hilchas we don't adopt their view halacha lamai, so we don't pass it like that. So uh, we follow the Rabbanu who say, in all cases, you need a three-year chazaka, which of course you don't have. Amal is Rabbanan, held his own. He says, what do you mean? Okay, fine. There's no halacha of chazaka, but the fact is, he was moichel. He allowed me to do this. He, he actually helped me build. He assisted me in rebuilding that fence on his side of the property. So he was moichel. So Rav Nachman responds, he didn't do it consciously. It looks like he's moichel, but it was a mistake. He didn't realize where the property line was. Look, you yourself, would you have done this if you would have known exactly where to put it? Right? The, the markers got erased. If you would have known where to put it, you wouldn't have done it either. You yourself, if you would have known exactly where to put it, you wouldn't have done it. So, of course, the same applies to him. So, just like you weren't aware, who your neighbor as well was not aware. So, you can't deem his cooperation as a de facto acquiescence. Rav Kahana Shoko Bit A similar story occurred with Rav Kahana. So the flood came along, wiped away the property line, property markers. Azal Hadar Gudabar delayed the day. So he re erected that fence. It turns out that it was partially, it was moved into his neighbor's side. Azal Kabit Rav Yuda. So the neighbor comes right to Rav Yuda. And he has, um, he has um, Adam, right? Rav Kahana obviously disagreed. And uh, the neighbor brought witnesses to prove these facts that in fact the pro- the, the fence is now on his uh, has been moved over. Now the issue is that he he had Adam, but they were inconsistent, contradictory somewhat. Azal Sahadi. So he brought two Adam, but they were telling different stories. They were slightly off on the on the facts. Chadomar, one of the Adam says, Tarti Utsiyaisi. Utsiyaisi saw these. Um, rows, right? Like, uh, you know, in the farm, there are these furrows, right? So, basically, it was some sort of form of measurement. So, he says two, uh, the fence is two rows in to the neighbor's property. He went in two rows. The other one says, he went in three rows. So, the question is, do we just cancel them out? They're not saying the same story. Or do we say, no. So, Rav Yudah says, Zil Shlim, uh, Rav Kahana, you have to return Tarati Migat Las, at least two of those three, because you realize both of these witnesses agree on two. It may be more, but they both agree that it's at least two, so you're obligated on that. 
Omar Leis, Rabbi Yehuda responded, what do you mean? They're contradicting each other. Command to Rabbi Shimon Lazar? Do you mean to say you're adopting Rabbi Shimon Lazar's opinion? Who allows us to use this type of sort of semi-contradictory testimony? The Sanya as we have in a price. Omar Rabbi Shimon Lazar. Then in fact, Beis Hillel maintained that you could do this uh, type of testimony. There's no discussion. There's no machlek. It's between Shama and Basil. When you have two separate teams of witnesses, Shachas and Meres Mana, Vachas and Meres Masayim, we're speaking about financial litigation. So basically, one peer of Adam comes and testifies that Ruvain, you know, borrowed $100 from Shimon. Vachas and Meres Masayim. The other peer comes and says, well, that same day, the same location, we saw him borrowing 200 They both agree on the first hundred. But after all, they're contradicting each other on the second hundred. How do we deal with this? So we have a machlekes. Sorry, so in this case, all agree, within 200 lies 100. Meaning that the second group of Edom who are presenting the 200 number certainly agree about 100. So you can work with that and he has to pay him 100. Al manichalku. When then do we have a machlekes? Al kat achas. Oh, it's one team. One pair of Edom, who are sort of contradicting each other with the numbers. Sha'echadim Eimer Mana, Be'echadim Eimer Masayim, Reuben is saying 100, Shem is saying 200. So here within the same group, you have that contradiction. Here we have a machlekes. Do we just reject it, or can we at least accept the lower amount? Shem Esham Eimer, no, Nechlekah Edusam. They're split up, they're contradicting each other, it's gone. Ube Yitzhil Eimer, no. Even within the same team, we can still... Um, opt for the smaller amount. Yesh b'chlal mosayin mona. Within 200, you have 100. So even Shimon is agreeing to Reuben on the 100. And that's the same story that happened in our, in our case. With a fence that got moved over, two aid them. One said two rows, one said three rows. You can at least um, work with the lower number despite the fact that they were contradicting each other. Amr Leis, Sir of Yudah, uh, Sir of Kahana, responded to Rav Yudah. You're assuming that the halacha follows Rav Shimon and Allah, right? I will bring you a letter from Eretz Yisrael. We don't paskin like this. So even when it's... Uh, yeah, so, so there's no uh, shita that, um, that allows us to use any sort of testimony that's been contradicted in this manner within, you know, within the same team. So likewise, in my case, I'm not obligated to do anything because the Edom are contradictory. So you respond, okay. In the meantime, we do it this way until you bring the letter. When you bring the letter, we'll deal with it then. In the meantime, we adopt this as the Allah. Continues the Gemara regarding a buyer. There was a story about a fellow, the Dar, who dwelled, who resided, but Kashta in this town, Kashta, be Lisa, in the upper floor of a property, of a house. He was there four years, more than a Chazak. Also, Mori de Besa comes along the uh, former owner of this house, the official owner, and he meets this. Uh, Fellow occupying his property. Amalei, um, he asks him, my boy is by, by base, what are you doing in this house? Amalei um, says, what do you mean? This was Reuben confronting Shimon, right? So Shimon responds, what do you mean? I bought it from Levi. Amalei, um, with Planya Zavinta. Who bought it from you? The Zavna Minach. Okay. So that's a pretty valid uh, claim. But the question is, how do we know that Levi owned it? Maybe Levi just sold the Brooklyn Bridge. He sold something that didn't really belong to him. Also, come to Rebchia. Come to Rebchia. Amalei, he turns to the Buyer, Mr. Shimon, he says, Look, he is uh, I'll adopt your, I'll take on your claim, but you have to at least prove. Do you have Adim? Do you have witnesses? The Dar Ba'il, the Zavnis Minei, that the person, Eel, the person, the Zavnis, they bought it from him, lived in this property, the Dar Ba, I feel even just at least one day. That will be enough for me to allow you to hold on to the property because you have to at least establish somewhat in minimal form that your seller was a legal resident, a legal owner of this property. So at least one day, we have to see the, there's at least one day. But otherwise, if you can't prove that much, I can't allow you to keep the property because maybe Levi just sold you Reuven's property. I'm a rab. Rab responded. Rab was Rab Chia's nephew. I was sitting in front of Chavivi. He called Rab Chia his uncle Chavivi. Uh, an endearing uh, um, 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 reference. So I was sitting there and I responded to him. 
why is this condition a requirement? Do people not, you know, flip properties quickly or buy or sell the same night? So just because nobody saw him sitting in the property doesn't mean he didn't own it. You know, Mr. Levy, the seller, the alleged seller. Okay, so Rav sort of challenged Rabchia, but Rabchia held his ground that at a minimum, you need to prove that the alleged seller was an alleged owner, that he was there at least for, for, for one day. But I did take note that Rabchia would make an exception in the following case. If Shimon, in response to Reuben, would have said, in my presence, in front of me, did Levi buy it from you? Man, now he's trusted, now he's believed. You know, he has a migu. He could have, if he would want to, he could just lie, ignore the whole thing. He could say, well, I'm here four years, I bought it from you, Mr. Reuben. That's a chazaka, I don't have to prove that. Migu di boy amli, because if he wished, he could have told Reuben, Ana, I purchased it from you. And there goes the uh, Reuben's claim. So since he has that ability, that migu, he, uh, he wins. Amar Rav, says Rav HaKabaseid, I will seek to prove, I would seek to support Rav Chia's idea that a buyer has to substantiate somewhat his seller's ownership. Tiktonic, look at the Mishnah. The last line of the Mishnah is, Haba Mishnah Yerusha, if a person is a son, he claims to have gotten this property from his father, Yerusha, he doesn't have to explain things, how, when, and where his father obtained this property. Okay, Taino Dele Boy. He doesn't need that type of um, a presentation. Haraya Boy. But it would appear that at least a Raya he has to provide. Raya means that he has to show that his father, he has to bring Aiden that his father was at least there for a day, which substantiates his father's hold, which now is transferred to the son. So we see that at a minimum, you have to prove that your provider, whether it's your seller or in this case, the father who's Moirish has established himself somewhat, has been somewhat connected to this property. Says the word, no, no. Vadilma, maybe loy raya boy, loy tiny boy. Maybe the mission just means that a son is not obligated to bring anything. No raya, no tiny. All he has to say is, I got it from my father, I have no idea. No idea how he got it. I don't have proof that he was there. I know this is my father's property, right? I can't bring Aiden, but I know it was his and uh, he passed away, it's mine. We will say another option, even if we'll agree that a Yerush does have to prove something, but maybe a buyer does not, such as in the case of the story with the Kashta Belisa, because maybe a buyer is different. You know what? A person would not pluck down a million dollars on a property unless he does due diligence, proper research to ensure that his seller is in fact the owner. So perhaps we should just rely on that and not require him to actually bring Adam. Shani Lekech, a buyer is different than a Yerush. The Lord Shadi Zuzibhti, nobody who throws out his money into the wind for nothing. So we can't really prove anything one way or the other, but at the end of the day, Rabkhir did require him to bring Adam that his seller, or in the case of a Yerush, the uh, the Mayrish, the father, was there for a day. Concludes the Gemara with a Shail, Iboilu. So once we've established this point that the seller had to have been there for a day, and you, you need Adam to present that. What about Nira boy? You can't bring Adam that the owner lived there for a day, but we know that he was taking a survey of the property, right? Is that enough to establish ownership? Is that like Ria? Is that like they saw him living there? He was just you know, measuring the property. Is that considered occupying the property? Nira by my Omar by he he yeah of course, whether you live there whether you you're surveying the property that denotes ownership. Rav Omar no, just because he surveyed the property doesn't mean it was his. Of it Inish it's very common for people to go ahead the sire Ari, Ara to go and walk around the property survey it measure it to see what it's all about in anticipation of a possible future you know purchase. Blaze of and perhaps the deal didn't go through he didn't buy the property. So unless the Adam actually saw him living there as a resident, his ownership is unsubstantiated.
Okay, let's summarize today's daf, a rather simple daf. A chazaka requires a taina. So let's say he's there for many years, but he doesn't have much to say for himself. I don't know. I'm here because nobody complained. That doesn't work. You sold it to me. You gave it to me matana, etc. That works. What about like keach or a yerush? Right? So he says, look, uh, this fellow sold it to me. Um, and he was there for a day. I've ate him. So that's enough. Or he sold it to me and I saw that he actually bought it from you. I was there when he bought it from you. That also works. And the same thing with the Yerush. You'd have to show that his father was at least, Adam, that his father was there at least for a day. That's all he needs to uh, maintain the property. All the best to you. And that's the Quran.